Yeah? So uh, I'm Jason Helmick, uh, 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 <laughs> I don't even know what I do now, uh, product manager on PowerShell team and Cloud Shell team. And I'm joined today by the infamous Steve Lee. He's the lead engineer, engineering manager of the PowerShell team. So thanks, Steve, for joining us today. Before we dive in and get cranking, let me just ask you guys a couple of questions. How many of you have used desired state configuration in the past? Wow, how many of you have not used it? Great, perfect, outstanding. Um, so what we'd like to do today is kind of have a conversation with you, and Steve's gonna show you a lot of great stuff about DSC V3. Well, you don't have to, you know, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's get a couple of things straight. Don't woo-hoo stuff that you don't know if it's good or not. So let's take a look at it for a second. And here's the thing. In order to do this, what we're going to do is I want to take you through, because some of you haven't really experienced DSC, I'm going to take you through a really brief intro to DSC V1, kind of sort of slash V2 that we already have out there. And then Steve is going to take you into the future work that we're looking at and the things that we're, we're doing. I think you will see that we're not just rehashing the same thing. You with me? I want to know what they're sm are d are doing over there. Uh, <laughs> Jason, I, th I think we can be louder than them, though. Yeah, I think so. In a minute here, I'm going to give you an opportunity to be louder than them. So yeah. here we go. DSC four in that room. What? <laughs> that was good. That was good. I go over there and punch him. Um, so <laughs> here we go. All right. Uh, where'd my mouse go? That's good. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. So. Back in, and I'm not going to remember the exact year, but at Tech Ed, Jeffrey Snover and Kenneth Hansen of the PowerShell team stood up, and this is around the release of, uh, before, but talking about the release of, I think it was 2012 R2, and Jeffrey Snover stood up and says, you know, Kenneth, what we need is a distributed heterogeneous configuration management platform. Now, of course, distributed meaning goes everywhere. Heterogeneous means we don't care what the target is. It doesn't have to be Windows anymore, and it's a configuration management platform, at which time, <laughs> at which time he turns to Kenneth Hansen and says, make it so. And so Kenneth is like, and then goes through and shows all this stuff. Well, here's what I want to do. I want to show you, well, that went a little bit faster than I wanted. Here's what they did. They talked about DSE from this wonderful, amazing architecture slide, which at the end of the conversation, I seriously doubt you'll still know anything about DSC. But they also then started throwing out all of these terms. It was a lot because none of us knew what any of this stuff was. And so you're getting your brain smacked over by all this new stuff. Unless you were already playing with CF and all that other stuff in configuration management, this was new. So I'm going to give you a rundown of V1, not with this. That's when you're supposed to applaud. <laughs> yeah, screw that. Instead, we're going to do it this way, Star Trek. So here we go. Now, number one, this is the finest Star Trek series to ever existed, except for the original. I'm waiting for people to disagree, and it's like, you guys, well, I'm afraid. So I know you really can't see the pictures, but here's how this worked. Now, I was in college when these episodes were airing live. And somebody just went, wow, I'm not dead yet. Um, anyways, so I was in college, and what we would do is we'd watch these episodes, and we'd analyze these episodes, right? That's what you do. And I, it, it, it just, oh. every single episode went the same way. Something was going terribly wrong. You know, the first 40, 45 minutes was everything's going terribly wrong, and now the ship is going to be destroyed. Every episode, same thing, ship's going to be destroyed. And at this point, Jean-Luc Picard stands up out of his chair and goes, number one, take the ship out of danger. And number one kind of goes, what the, okay. Um, now, I want to point something out at this, at this point. First of all, the captain declared what he wants. He doesn't know how to do it. He just wants it. Now, those of you like in the Navy, Captain's Wishes, this is some serious stuff, but he doesn't know how to do it. And I also would like to point out to you that he turned to number one and says, take the ship out of danger. 
Number one doesn't know how to do it either. But what number one does know how to do, number one knows what resources he has available to accomplish the goal. So number one stands up and goes, I don't know how to do this, but I do know that, hey, Jordy, I need you to realign the defector, di the defector dish, the deflector dish, and do something else. And then, you know, Date, I need you to analyze and extend the warp bubble. And Deanna, I need, where are you going? Stop reading my mind. And then all of this, and finally, they do this. The ship's out of danger. And what does Will Riker do after utilizing all of those resources? And he comes back, turns to the captain, and says, Captain, ship's out of danger. And the captain goes, Thank you, number one. T. Hot Earl Grey. In other words, an end of another day. All of this happens the same way it does kind of in this configuration management that we used to have. We would have, you would declare what you wanted. You didn't have to know what you wanted. This is the declarative approach that you hear us talking about so much today. We did it with what was called a keyword that you did in a PS1 that created this configuration. It was very simple for you to figure out the property information. You would hand that to a local configuration manager, the LCM. That LCM, number one, didn't know how to do it either, but knew what resources were available to enact this. It would call the resources that actually knew the imperative code. In other words, I don't know how to install SQL, but this resource does. I just know I want one. Go make me one. Make it so. And the resource did it. Now, out of this brief description, who's more important, the captain or the resources? Because nothing gets done if there are no resources. Now, oddly enough, of course, the captain is the most celebrated character on this ship just because he's got great resources. Now, when DSC came out, DSC had no, didn't have very many resources. You, the community, helped build those resources to manage server. I just don't think we're done yet. So that's going to bring up a challenge. And with that, Thanks for that distributed heterogeneous system you gave us, but here's what happened. So we've been sitting back going, hmm, hmm, hmm. And then we started hearing this. Hey, could you uh, add some support for Linux? Maybe some easier to write resources. Maybe decouple it from PowerShell, maybe open source, all that kind of stuff. Could you do something like that? So I'm officially going to stand here and turn to Steve and go, make it so. <laughs> Wait, am I Jordy or? Oh, no. <laughs> Number one? All right. So I'm going to go over some of the goals as we thought about, you know, what, what does V3 mean? Uh, again, we're, when we use DSC here, we're not talking about just the PowerShell module PSS RC configuration. We're talking about the entirety of the platform. So one of the top things is, you know, uh, going back to, like, the state of the shell and even, like, the keynote, you know, the world is a messy place. Uh, most of you are probably doing things beyond what you were doing, like, five, ten years ago. Uh, so open source and cross-platform is something we definitely need to have um, designed from the beginning. So this is not public yet. Um, I'm hoping that we can get this into a state that we can make public. Uh, I'm going to tentatively say June. Um, but that's where we're doing development right now. And by, uh, by default, we're going to support Windows, Linux, and Mac. Just like we, the, the goal here is to support all the platforms that PowerShell 7 supports, even though we'll talk about the PowerShell relationship in a bit. So when we say we decouple from PowerShell, it doesn't move, mean that we're moving away from PowerShell. It just means that. You know, we're, we're, we want to kind of be able to iterate on DSC independent of PowerShell 7. So one of the first things that we did is we removed PS Desire State Configuration Module from the PowerShell 7 package itself, but you can always install it and you should install it from the gallery to get the latest version. Uh, so this will allow you to now say, hey, I'm going to stay on 7.2 LTS and I want to use a newer version of PS Desire State Configuration, and you can do that with this model, whereas before you have to move to 7.2x or 7.3 or whatever the case may be. So the other part here is we also want to enable DSC for folks who are not using PowerShell, um, because maybe their environment doesn't allow it, or maybe they're not PowerShell users yet. Um, so I'm going to demo later this new DSC command. This is a native command um, that does the equivalent of some of what LCM used to do and also some of what Invoke DSC resources uh, does today. I'd say keep that in mind because those of you who worked with DSC before, think about this, being able to run DSC without necessarily needing PowerShell. That, we had that as a problem a lot of times. Depends on what nodes and devices you were going to or you wanted to go to. This is a, this is a thing. All right. So one of the other things um, that we already mentioned when we first started this uh, journey towards V3, you know, we have the PSDSR configuration preview 
It's been out there for a long time. Um, but the thing that we said is uh, bring your own agent. So what this means is that we're not creating a LCM replacement. Instead, we want to not compete with existing solutions, and we, we just want to integrate with like machine config, Ansible, Puppet Chef, whatever you're using today or not using. Um, because in this case, you could also use a PowerShell script as your agent. You can use, you know, marry that with Task Scheduler. It's kind of primitive, but it'll work. And because of this work, we're also enabling new scenarios that DSC didn't conceive of uh, back in the day. So, and this was announced, I forget exactly when, and I think Demetrius has a session on this. Yeah, as a matter of fact, folks, tomorrow, I think it's at one o'clock, check the schedule, but Demetrius Nellen has a session on WinGet. A lot of the things that we've been thinking about, because of some of the internal partners like Winget we've been talking to, this is one of the reasons why we've started to do this all again and start this massive development around DSC again. Go see the Winget stuff. It's going to be really interesting. Yeah, and the hope is that we'll see more applications, not just Winget, kind of leverage DSC as a way to do configuration for whatever domain they, they live in. So, of course, we're not moving away from PowerShell. We still want to support, you know, right now, um, DSC in general, the resources are primarily on PowerShell, or written in PowerShell. So we do want to continue to support all the existing ones that you get off the PowerShell gallery, class-based uh, script functions. There was a moment in time where we thought that maybe we would only support yeah. class-based, so we're, we're kind of going back on that now. Uh, also, based on customer feedback, again, you know, as, as much as we uh, love and develop PowerShell 7, there are certain resources and modules that only work in Windows PowerShell for various reasons. So in this new model, which I'll show later, um, although I'll show parts of it later, uh, you can't actually explicitly say, I want this to run in a Windows PowerShell versus PowerShell 7. Now, as part of building out this new uh, DC ecosystem, again, now that's not uh, tightly coupled with PowerShell, it means that we have an opportunity here where we can actually grow the DC community and get folks to build more resources and they don't have to build it in PowerShell script. And then the people who do still use PowerShell, they can still leverage those resources, right? So a lot of the feedback we got is like, hey, people love the idea of DC. They love configuration as code, but they're not, they haven't spent time learning PowerShell, and they also haven't spent time learning about PowerShell classes. So this was a big barrier for them to adopt it. Uh, so this, and I'll show this later, this should remove that barrier. Uh, the idea here is really command-based resources. So as long as your resource can be executed from the command line, it can become a resource. And I'll, I'll show it more detail later what the contract looks like. Also, uh, some of the things that you'll see later really kind of shift some of the complexity of writing uh, resources into the DSC layer. So you still have to be item potent. Um, you still have to have at least get, and you should have set, and you can optionally have test. But the idea here is like some of the other things that uh, we've learned working with like machine config and, and other agent partners, we, we kind of shifted that into the DSC layer so that you can get, uh, and I'll, I'll show this later, you can see like what happened when I did a set, what was the previous state, what's the current state, and things like that. All right, uh, so I originally started at Microsoft on a WMI team, so I, I wouldn't say I love Moth, but I was very comfortable with Moth. But I also recognize that the rest of the industry did not adopt Moth. This is a managed object format. It's like an idle-based language. Um, instead, the industry really has standardized on JSON for better or worse. Uh, so one of the things that we're doing here is really sticking with JSON as the way, because there's just so much tooling around JSON. There's so much uh, documentation. There's no reason to try to you know, bring Moth to that forefront. This is for both the configuration document and the resource schema. So if you remember like classic DSC, if you have a script-based resource, your schema had to have a MOF file, and when you compiled your configuration, it would generate a MOF file. So you can imagine all that is gone. Um, and just to be clarify, for script-based function resources, you don't have to convert your MOF schema into JSON or anything like that. Um, that's handled uh, within our code. And then, JSON, as much as machines are e easily read it, is not really suited for humans to really read. So I'll show this later. Um, our expectation is that you author your actual configuration document in YAML. You can still do it in JSON if you prefer, but we can support both. Uh, the configuration syntax is derived from ARM templates. So if you're already familiar with ARM templates, this should be very familiar. Um, if you're familiar with the PowerShell configuration keyword, this will look uh, a little bit alien for now. All right, and, and hopefully you'll, uh, we'll, we'll go through some of those examples and explain some of the concepts. Hopefully it's not overly complicated. And we don't have anything to demo today, but one of the pieces of our roadmap is to eventually have a VS Code extension so that if you're authoring a configuration document, YAML slash JSON, that we can actually do discovery of the resources, you'll get IntelliSense to get validation and all that stuff. So that doesn't exist yet. All right, this is a kind of a, 
heavy slider. So I'm, I'm not going to go this in detail, but this just kind of shows on the left side the orange agent. So this could be your PowerShell script running in Task Scheduler. It could be Ansible, or Chef, Puppet, Machine Config, XYZ. Um, the idea on the top here, can I use, I don't know if you guys can see the mouse here, but basically the end user provides that agent with you know, the desired state configuration document, and that will get fed into the DSC XE, which I will show later. And the DSC XE is going to parse this out and say, hey, there's, uh, if you look on the upper right, there's some part of this configuration that requires what I'm calling native resources. These are just executables. And there's some part of it that requires partial resources, which is the bottom, the gray part. So the idea here is like, for the end user, you, you may have to know a little bit about some of these details, but for the most part, you can leverage both types, right? And then um, don't worry about these other text things here. We're going to go over each of these in turn when I get to the demo. Oh, there's the demo. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, oops, all right, let's not skip too far ahead. Uh, hold on, I need to do this. All right, so first word of warning for those in the back. This is the, I'll, I'll get to this part of the demo, but I want to make sure, like, this is the uh, font size that we're able to use. So if you're not able to see, you may, I don't know. Come down out, closer. Yeah, or, or I think these are recorded, so you can watch it back later and just kind of maybe hopefully uh, listen and understand some of the uh, verbal content. Uh, we did, and just to answer some immediate questions, we did try both the light theme and dark theme, and this one actually worked out better. And we also discussed whether or not we could project onto the back wall, and that was not an allowed. option. Yeah, yeah. So that wasn't an option. All right, so. And the stuff you see here is out of the DC repo, which will eventually be public. All right, so let me just, um, so this, this markdown doc is just to remind me that uh, what content I want to go through so I don't forget everything. All right, so we talked about, okay, so let me just show, uh, I'll show a simple one first. Which one do I want to show? Let's show this one. All right, so here is just a very simple uh, YAML configuration document, all right? And if you're familiar with ARM templates, then this should look very familiar. Now, we did remove, because we don't have a need or didn't map to DSC certain properties, um, for example, like API version didn't map cleanly with DSC, and, and we didn't want to artificially use that, and that's mandatory. So this will, we're trying to stick to a strict subset of the ARM template syntax where we can. All right, that way, hopefully in the future, it means that any existing ARM tools, including Bicep, and we'll work with those teams, it means that you can potentially leverage those tools to generate uh, DC configuration. All right, so to walk through this example, um, this is using two different resources, uh, one of them twice. So uh, I'll show some of this in detail later, but there's an OS info uh, example resource that I wrote. Um, and by the way, anything that's not in PowerShell was written in Rust, okay, just FYI. So if you are a Rust developer and you want to contribute, uh, let's, let's talk. <laughs> All right. Um, so OS info doesn't take any properties. I'll show that later uh, again. It's just going to return like is it Windows, Linux, Mac, what the version and stuff like is. Um, there's a whole registry resource which actually took a lot of effort to write in Rust for various reasons I won't get into here. Uh, but basically it takes a key path and a value name and it's going to return that. And a second registry uh, use of the resource. So a couple of things to call out here. Uh, the name is just a friendly name. So this is what you can define to kind of remind yourself what the purpose of using this resource is for, all right? Uh, later on, you, which is not implemented yet, you can refer to these like in terms of dependencies and stuff like that. Type is what you may have thought of previously as the resource name. And it's not enforced now, but I'll probably make it uh, enforced where you need to have what's called a namespace and the resource name, all right? So in the PowerShell case, this namespace would just be the module and the resource name will be the resource name. In all the cases, um, what we want to avoid is a situation where, let's say, uh, Amazon has a registry resource and Microsoft has a registry resource, and so it's confusing to even the author, like which, what's going to happen, right? So this is going to be mandatory and required. And the properties are basically when the orchestration happens, everything under properties, um, which would be these two lines here, will get passed as JSON to this registry resource. It, does what it's supposed to do, you know, make it so, and then either return success or failure. Same with this one. So let me just see if I can, oops. Yes, okay, so where am I? Uh, I think I have to go here. All right. Ay, ay, ay. All right. <laughs> this is, let me just do it. Um, this shouldn't take too long. I need to make sure that everything's in the path. Ignore those warnings. 
This is live. All right. So let me see. Uh, let's get the example. And all the examples are also in the repo. So I think this was the OS info. I think it was this guy. All right. So I'm going to run this through the DC XE command. Uh, I'm going to say this is a configuration. I'll show later that you can also do the equivalent of Oak DC resource. I'm not going to do test because uh, it's not implemented yet. I can do get though. And uh, well, one other thing I'll mention um, because there's a kind of a pause here because basically at this point it's doing discovery of all the resources, which I'll go into in a bit. Uh, when it hits PowerShell, PowerShell resource discovery is not the fastest thing. So I, I will have progress and stuff added later. All right. So one thing you'll notice is that's not JSON, right? That's, that's YAML. So one of the features of the DC XE is that if it knows that you're not piping the output of DC, whatever you want, uh, into something else, then it's gonna actually going to uh, render YAML with syntax coloring. All right? But if you were to actually, for example, actually, I'm not going to run it again real quick because it's going to take a bit of time. But if you were to pipe it to something else or sort it in a variable, you'll actually get JSON. Um, so in terms of the output, you can see here, right? So one of the, again, one of the things I mentioned is we want to kind of up-level some of the uh, complexity that was in resources into the DC layer. So everything's wrapped. There's different object types for uh, get, set, and test. So this is a get. Um, it shows results. And here you can see stuff like uh, OS info, the actual state. Um, this is running Windows 10, Windows 11 professional. You know, it has the bitness here. Uh, and then like two things from the registry, right? Uh, don't ask me why the registry says it's Win 10 Pro and why uh, API call says it's Windows 11. That's a, that's a Windows question, not me. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then the other thing here is like, uh, I'll, I'll talk about messages in a bit, but uh, if, you, if you worked in the DC community, you know, one of the things that has been promoted to add is this thing called reasons. So when things don't work, you can have a little more information to the end user, like what happened. So that's what messages is for, and I'll show that in a bit. Um, and finally, there's a had errors, right? So you can easily check, did anything fail? Obviously for, well, Git can still fail if you, if you don't have permission, but in this case, uh, no, there's no errors. So let me just go back here. And by the way, if you have questions, I'll, do we want to take questions? In the uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Do you, do you have like a mic or something you can walk around with? Yeah, I'll come up with something. All Feel right. free to ask questions. We'll repeat them and so they get them on the recording and stuff like that. Anytime right. you want. So we talked about uh, all of this so far, except for depends on. So let me show, all right, I'm trying to figure out which one I want and not show. It's just an assertion. I'll talk about this. So before I show the depends on, I, I probably should explain what assertions are. This is a new concept in V3 that didn't exist in V2 or V1. So working with the Winget team, um, you know, they have a slightly different scenario. Instead of configuring a whole system, they're trying try to configure like a developer role, right? So if you're like um, using Winget to set up your system for a C Sharp developer or PowerShell developer or Node developer, whatever the case may be, um, they may not be able to install certain things because you don't have the right service pack, the right version of Windows. And what they don't want is to say, requires you know, this update, and then suddenly Windows gets updating, right? Like the user doesn't want that. So the purpose of assertions, and if you ever use group policy, this is very similar to like a group policy filter, right? It means that regardless if you're doing a get, set, or test, everything in the assertion group is actually going to be a test, right? And if anything fails, then it will fail before you actually start applying configuration. And the way to do that is through the depends on, which is down here. So again, uh, we're still trying to figure out the syntax, whether or not we need the type, because technically you can just use the name, but maybe the type is useful for the user. I don't know yet. Um, but that's kind of like, uh, by the way, the, the reason this is here right now is this is what ARM templates will look like. You have like the, the type and then uh, your friendly name. So that's kind of like this. Um, assertions is not currently implemented. That's still, that's something I was working on prior to Summit. So hopefully it'll be something that I can show maybe at the next DSC community call. All right, uh, anything else worth covering in here or any questions? All right, one other thing I uh, just showed that I'll explain real quick. So in the old or in the current DSC model, then individual resources have like ensure and, and things like that, right? There's some common properties. So in this world, this underscore ensure is still handled by the resource, but we're trying to standardize these so that kind of like, you know, PowerShell uh, verbs, right? Like you don't want to have someone that slightly had it different, uh, but it means the same thing. So I don't think that's been a problem in the DC community, but as we grow the community and people write more resources, we want to make sure that we don't have that problem, right? So ensure and I, I don't think there's anything else right now, but you can kind of imagine all these common ones will have an underscore in front. All right, let's go back here. All right, so we talked about that. All right, resource manifest schema. 
So let's find an example one here. For, let's look at the registry one. This guy. All right, so resource uh, manifests are all JSON files. And right now these are, again, if it's a PowerShell resource, it doesn't need any of this new stuff. It will just work the way it is uh, developed today. But for any new type of resource, you need to have a uh, .resource.json file. And this is the information dsc.exe needs to know how to call you. Uh, in this case, you can kind of see this is a registry and we got the namespace Microsoft Windows. I uh, got the version and basically for get, set, and test down here, Basically, it's just what arguments do I need to pass to your executable to perform a get versus a set versus a test, right? It's pretty simple. And also, there's a input. Right now, um, the prototype only supports students. So basically, when you get your piece of the properties from the configuration document, that piece is gonna be JSON that's passed to your command. And it's up to you to parse that. And in general, as far as I know, like most languages, like whether you write in Go, Rust, whatever, there is a JSON parser. parser. So that shouldn't be too difficult. There is a different, uh, input that is, uh, I would say, being considered, where instead of passing JSON, like um, we've heard some people, I don't know if this is a good idea, that they want to write like a DC resource in a bash script, right? Uh, and it doesn't make sense for them to kind of call out to an, ex they, they could, but they, it doesn't make sense for them to call it to an executable to parse the JSON and do that work. Instead, maybe it makes sense to just pass it as name value pairs as um, arguments to the, to the script, which means that you can't have like nested stuff, but that, that might be okay for those scenarios. So that's something being considered. Uh, we'll get to some of this other stuff like pretest, return. Uh, okay, so the other thing here, uh, exit codes, it's kind of like a work in progress. I'm not sure if I'm happy with this or not, but the idea is like, you know, an executable only has so many ways of returning uh, output or information back to DCX. This is not PowerShell. We don't have all those streams that you can use. We don't have objects. So in this case, um, it's just defining exactly what these exit codes mean. That way, if it fails, we can tell the user um, what you told us anyways. And then the last part that's important is really the schema. So every resource needs to have, every command-based resource needs to have a JSON schema. That way we can do pre-validation of the entirety of the configuration document before we run a single thing. All right, and this basically says, the way you get the schema out of the registry resource is that you call registry.exe on Windows um, and you pass it the schema uh, subcommand and then it will return a JSON schema document back. I can show an example where OS Info, again, this is a much simpler resource. And you can see in this case, the schema is embedded, right? Um, and this, this, is, this tells you here is uh, what it's gonna return. All right. Any questions thus far? Everyone following along at least? Okay. So quiet, I can't tell. <laughs> Let me know if anyone snores. All right, uh, going back to here, let's see. Uh, okay, so let's do some examples of uh, invoke, the equivalent of invoke DC resource if you wanna call a resource directly. Um, maybe you're, a, you're developing a resource, right? You don't wanna write a whole config wrapping it to execute it. Then let me go to registry. Actually, I can just go to OS info. So in the readme here, I got some examples. Uh, oh, actually, I can just show like, oops, no. All right, if I just run, so OS info is the actual resource. And again, it's gonna emit JSON. And you can kind of see like, um, if this was a regular tool that happens to also be a DC resource, then it might be better for it if you run it directly to emit uh, text that is more human parsable. But um, for, for the purpose of testing here, it emits, OS, um, it emits JSON here. And so if I wanted to now run this, uh, let's see, so let's do it this way. OS equals DSC list. So, so DC list is the equivalent of get DC resource. And then I can put a wildcard here, OS info, because I don't, may not remember the namespace I put on this. Oh, I didn't put the word resource Oops. in front. Resource, okay. So again, right now it's doing discovery. Um, one of the things that you may have hit in PSSRC configuration if you're doing your own invoke DC resource is that every time you call it, it's gonna redo discovery. Um, so that is a big perf hit. In this case, what, see if, uh, again, this is JSON, so you don't need to worry about what it actually uh, says, but it maps to, um, part of it is the manifest and all that, but the idea here is like, if you store this, I have a source in a variable, then I can actually do something like DSC resource get dash R is uh, the parameter to pass in the resource, so I can show you the example here, so I can do like this. So this is actually doing invoke DSC resource, but it has to do discovery, right, and this is a, 
it'll take a little bit of time. But so, so it finally ran. But instead, if I pass in the JSON, it's going to run it immediately. Like there's no discovery because all the information needed to find and run this uh, resource is part of that JSON, right? So that is one of the things that we do plan on fixing in the PSSR state configuration module uh, so that if you already cached the resource and you want to pass it back through, then we can at least, for those who still stay in that world, uh, you hopefully will at least not incur a discovery every time. What if I wanted to uh, return that as an object? I should pipe it to the, the question is, how do I return this as an object? Uh, I think you could argue that YAML is an object, all the structured data. So, so there's no live objects here, right? There's no .NET here at all. But you can get, if you prefer JSON, so for example, if I just pipe this to convert from JSON, right, then, although it's not great because I have this um, <laughs> outer wrapper that kind of hides everything, uh, like anytime there is action that redirects output, then you get JSON. So for example, if I were to just simply go here and just put in the variable P, right, then P is going to contain the JSON text. So basically, the only time you're actually seeing YAML, and you'll see it through this demo, um, is when it outputs directly to the console, right? And, and that's really a feature to make it easy for developers because, again, looking at this thing down here versus this thing up here, I personally think this YAML is much easier to read and understand what's happening than the JSON. But it is emitting JSON with the exception where it knows it is dumping it directly to a console. Sure. Okay, the question is it really about filtering uh, output. And let me show you a different resource because the, I don't know if I have an example for that one here. Maybe I do. No, okay, let me go to the registry one, which is more rich. All right, so, uh, all right, what, we'll take this one. All right, so you can kind of see this is, um, some JSON, I'm going to pipe to the registry config get, or this is a configuration. Let me see if I find one for just the resource. Uh, I oh, wait, these are uh, calling the registry command directly. Actually, this is, this is okay, I think. Yes, paste. All right, let me run this one first. So again, th this is bypassing DC XE because again, registry is just an executable. You can call it directly um, and it's gonna return that. But if I were to, if I can get this to work, let's say I don't care about this uh, value, right? Then I can do that. And if this works out, then you, you can use this. Basically, the idea with a proper resource is that whatever comes in as part of the JSON is the filter, right? So you could have, um, let me see, do I have another example here? Whoops. And this, this is a difference from V2, by the way. Um, this is an insure one. Okay, maybe we'll use this test case. And, okay, I'm not gonna check the last exit code. That was my, whoops. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay, so let me cover two different things here real quick. So, so with ensure, uh, it's actually going to also return whether or not uh, it's in the desired state. So, so this is, again, part of the standardization of, of a resource to support this. So not all resources support ensure. Now, going back to the filtering question, I don't necessarily have a good one here. But the idea is that if, uh, oh, maybe this one. Yeah, okay, let's do this. This is a set. Oops. Yes. All right, so uh, let me open up. Oops. All right, I'm gonna use reg edit because it's just gonna be quicker. I know you're not gonna be able to read it and you don't need to worry about seeing it. Oh, actually, there's, I'm gonna delete this because somebody ran this here. Okay, so let me go back here. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna actually, um, if you, I don't, you can't really see it in reg edit, but basically under HK current user, there's no key called one, right? But instead, I want to create a key called one, a sub key called two, a sub key called three. 
Under that, I want to create a value called hello. It's going to be a string, and it has the content world. I'm going to ensure it's present. So if I run this, um, again, don't worry about whether or not I need to refresh. All right, so it, it, one of the things, that it's going to create all these childs for you. It's kind of like equivalent of dash force, if you will, um, and it'll create that. So now, let me instead uh, take the same JSON, and I'm going to now change the string. Uh, let's see. So there's a couple of different things, right? If I remove this, but I want to show that in a second. Let's say I'm going to say uh, PS Summit, all right? So, and I'm not going to do a set here. The idea is that you can take any type of JSON and apply it for get, set, and test. And the way get is going to use it is that it's going to be applied as a filter. So in this case, obviously it's not going to find the string PS Summit, but it's actually going to ignore that. It's still going to return the value of hello, right? So um, if you look down here, like the value is still world. I didn't change it, right? Um, but the idea is that you wouldn't have to have different configuration for get, set, and test. You can still apply the same. Now, again, when, when the repo opens, if you think there's a bad idea, open up an issue, we can discuss it. But that's the current model. It's, like, it's going to be more loosely validating versus strict validation, which, uh, in my opinion, tends to work better <laughs> in the real world uh, versus, uh, I don't know, academics. So let me see. Anything else worth calling out here? All right, let me go back. Agenda to remind myself. This one. All right. Uh, we talked about that. Oh, current state and differences. Yes. All right. So let's do this. Um, let's do test. All right. Uh, and again, the reason I'm doing this directly through the resource, uh, and again, I, I could actually do it this way too. You see, resource get dash r. I still have that. No, it wasn't called. No, I didn't store registry, did I? Well, I could do something like this, but again, I'll do it once. But it's going to now have to do discovery, so it takes a bit of time. Uh, but eventually, we'll execute this. All right, but um, instead, I'm, I'm going to go directly to the resource. It's a little bit faster for the purpose of the demo. But if I do test here, right? So test says, all right, I want to ensure not only is it present, but I also want the value to be PS Summit, which we know it's not, because it, it still says world right now. So. And let's see, is there any way for me to make this easier to read? But uh, if probably not. So you can, at least the key things to pick out here is that uh, in desired state, which again has the underscore because it's a common type of result and not a result specific to this resource, if you will. It could apply to many different resources. Um, indicates that it's not in, in the desired state, right? So again, this is one of the loose contracts that we have with resources to make it easy that we don't have to do a strict comparison. Alexander, you have a question? All right, so I will use this other tool I wrote. <laughs> uh, I, we can use this, all right. I, I wasn't going to bring this up because I, I was planning on maybe just, it doesn't belong with DSC, but I use it for my development purposes. I'll explain it really quick. So the so question was really about uh, pretty output, all right. Um, I have this tool that I wrote called Y2J. Uh, it actually works in both directions, J to Y. Um, and ba like basically, if I do it again, it's going to have, uh, in this case, it'll be pretty but it would be pretty JSON or YAML. And basically, and you could use this in PowerShell if you wanted to. Uh, if basically you have YAML, it's gonna output JSON if uh, pretty, and if you have JSON, it outputs YAML, and you can just have all, you know, as much as you want. But anyways, I, I created it for my own purpose for, for your question, which is, guess what? Uh, this text up here, yeah, it's technically right, but it's hard to read. Um, and you can see there's like coloring and things here. Anyways, all right, um, okay, maybe I, Actually, I take the suggestion. I'm going to use this for the rest of the demo, if I remember. So yeah, at least it'll be easier to understand. OK, in desired state, false. Um, yeah, so then another case. Uh, let's do set. Uh, so if you were piping a whole bunch of those, yeah. <laughs> and some of them were true and some were not, would you have any way of saying, show me only the ones that are not right? When you say not right, you mean like, like say, Oh, oh. Two, three, four. Okay. That one is correct. Let me, let me, uh, okay, so let me go to the next uh, part, which is going back to one of the things I was saying. We want to uh, uh, shift the complexity of the stuff that you're asking about, which is how do I know which properties, if there's multiple, that is different, right? And that's going to be done at the DC layer versus the resource layer. 
So now, uh, let me do this. I'm going to just store this so that we're not going to incur uh, resource list. Uh, and I have to use the asterisk in front of registry because we have the namespace, right? So I think it's like Microsoft Windows, but I'd rather not type it. It's not going to save me any time anyways. <laughs> so, all right, so dollar $R, which, uh, again, if we go to this tool, you can see this is the, uh, you can consider like the, it's not just the manifest that I showed before, but it includes that manifest. But all right, so now uh, if we were to use the DC command instead of the, the registry command, so I'm, but I'm going to take, the problem is I can't take that JSON because I need to have configuration. So let me go back to my repo because I think I have an example, hopefully somewhere. Uh, all right, maybe I'll just use this one instead. Uh, OS info. All right, so get content, DSC. Uh, oh, wait, this isn't going to work. All right, you, you got me a little bit unprepared, but I can fix it. The reason is that uh, a full config document isn't going to work. But, uh... If you just tell me how it works, I'll believe you. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see any messages on Twitter about this. <laughs> I, I'm a negative. Positive stuff, I will accept. All right. Hold on, hold on. I think I got it. I got it. Uh, let me see. Where is the readme? All right, I think this will actually work. Let me just copy this one. All right, and we paste it. Where'd it go? Oh, just lagged a bit. All right, I think if I just do now um, DSC resource, let's do, oh, I can't set this one. Uh, I picked the wrong one, hold on. I need to pick one under HK current user. Uh, this one. Okay, so now DSC, whoops, fingers in the wrong spot. DSC resource, let's do set. Oh, actually, let's do test first so we won't mess things up. Dash R, and I think I put in R, right? All right, so uh, you won't see anything here, but the idea is that you would see, uh, it's only gonna go one level deep, all right? But uh, the best way to explain this is if you have a nested result and there is a difference at level two, it's gonna return the member at level one, all right? So you know, because if beyond that, you have to do your own work, because you, you'll have the full output here, right? Um, to do your own analysis, say, hey, this thing 10 levels deep is different, but at least you'll know at the top level, the top level members, um, there's a difference. So let's try to do, if I, okay, so if I do. Steve, you got about four minutes. Four minutes, I still got a lot to do, okay. Let's just use the rule two real quick. Uh, so quickly, you can kind of see value data is different because I changed this, right? All right, let me, uh, four minutes. All right, let me see what is important to cover real quick, and then I'm gonna have to unfortunately skip some stuff. Okay, we cover all that. Uh, okay, let's talk about some of these group resources. Uh, some of these are newer concepts. So we talked about assertion. Um, you know, that didn't exist in V2. Uh, let's talk about parallelism. So here would be the example. So the idea here, again, you can have a group um, and, and the idea is that anything within this group is gonna execute concurrently. So as the uh, author of the configuration document, you have to have known or validated that these are able to run concurrently, all right? There, there's no checks for you here. But if you happen to know that, then it's gonna be more efficient than trying to run everything sequentially. And of course, you can have, the, the model here is that you can have groups within groups. So technically, you could have a parallel group within a parallel group. You can have assertion that has a parallel group. It doesn't make sense in my mind to have a parallel group that has assertions, but you could do it. Um, remember, assertion is just going to do a test every time. So, in fact, one of the ways that uh, these resources will get implemented, um, here's the assertion resource, right? The assertion resource, um, although it's not working right now, is basically just calling back into the DSC XE itself and using that as a resource. And whether you, you're requesting get, it does a test. If you do a set, it does a test, right? It's a very simple resource to author in this mode. Um, the only thing that's missing is really validating that the uh, child properties are valid. Uh, and parallel would be similar, so the idea here is like, we can reuse the DSC XE as a resource again, but in this case, we can pass the switch that says parallel, and it'll do the right thing, right? Uh, in fact, the PowerShell group resource, uh, it works the same way. So let me just go to this one real quick. All right, so this will be on my last part, and then uh, I think we're good on time. 
So in this case, here's an example of one using the partial group resource. And right now, the, the proof of concept for the partial group resource is actually written as a PS1 script. Um, because we can just call PWSH uh, from the command line to call it, right? Uh, it just made it much faster than having uh, one of my engineers sort of write all the code for it. And all this is going to do is going to check that the OpenSSH service um, is running, the administrator user account exists, and then I'm going to use a native resource registry to do some other stuff, getting the product name right. So this is an example mixing two partial resources and the registry resource. So let's do get content, PSC, PowerShell, and again, right now, only get is implemented. And so right now, it's going to process this. It's going to get the partial group resource. It's going to call the partial group resource. We're going to have this term. Again, I don't know if provider, because it gets overloaded, but that's what we're using internally. So group resource can be a provider of resources. So you can imagine in the future, there may be like a node group resource, a Python group resource, you know, whatever. So that way, the idea here is like the group resource can, in fact, the way this works right now is that this PowerShell group resource can keep a long running PowerShell process instead of calling PowerShell XE or PWSH actually for every resource, right? So that's, that's one improvement. And so the way to do that is have it as a group. And again, you can kind of see the output here. Yes, this was using uh, some built-in resources that ship in Windows. Uh, OpenSSH is running, get all this information. So these are all the information you would normally get out of the DC resources. There's no magic on that part. Which is also why they're um, Pascal cased <laughs> instead of uh, oh. snake cased or other cases. So anyways. All right, I think we... Uh, Go ahead and hit the slides. And hey, there's really two things out of this. In case we, you can throw up that bird. Yeah, there oh, you go. Yeah, this is still me. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, do it, right. do it, do it. Let me, let me quickly go through this. So, so right now, the V3 work is a work in progress. Uh, I'm hoping that the, the thing, the reason I'm not making it public yet is one, I don't want to get a bunch of issues that we know about. But two, we don't have uh, more than just a proof of concept for partial support. So I think once we have that, once we have uh, set and test for configuration implemented, it'll still be buggy. It's still not to be used in production, but I think at that point it, we may open up the repo uh, so we can start getting feedback. But anyways, some future work that we have in mind. Uh, so again, we talk about ARM templates, right? So ARM also supports this concept of functions. Um, we, we're, we'll have to figure out if we want to support all of them or not. These are kind of like a halfway between like the old configuration keyword and um, the generated model file. ARM templates also support concept of parameters. So you can pass in parameters to your configuration. Um, I think this is kind of, this will be the kind of like the way to get to the equivalent of a group policy administrative template. That way you can have, you know, a configuration that you can pass around and they just provide parameters that are specific to their environment. Uh, variables is also an ARM template support. Um, okay, so secrets is definitely a problem. We don't want to have plain text secrets in your configuration. So we need to have some kind of model that will work with, uh, and there's a space here because this is not necessarily the secrets management module, but it'll probably be either using that or similar concept where you would have a, a standardized way of getting secrets into your configuration. Uh, run as group, so if you need to run stuff as a different user. Uh, DC resource manager. So this is a little bit complicated, but the idea here is that uh, if you think about DSC v2, the way you get resources today is use partial get, basically. I mean, there are other ways, but that's the, the canonical way. Uh, in this new world where not everything is written in partial, it doesn't really make sense to publish like the registry.exe to partial gallery or um, you know, if you're on Linux to publish to project and stuff like that. So this is an abstraction that we're thinking about on, you know, you may have either as part of this, this giant configuration or a separate one that says, I need these resources on this system for the actual configuration to run. So this is what the purpose of this would be. Like it'll, you can validate signatures, hashes, whatever, versions. Um, we also need to worry about how do we handle reboots because some configuration requires that. Yeah. And finally, the thing I, I wish I had because, you know, all those pauses doing discovery, uh, pro like the stuff that you get from PowerShell, right? Like progress, verbose debug, uh, things like that. All right. Oh, this is still me. Never mind. All right. So, again, last bullet is important. Uh, it is not open yet, so there's no immediate call to action other than, you know, you can think about ideas and uh, send it to Jason. Um, but for now, I, I'm targeting getting this open uh, to the public hopefully the first half of June of this year. Um, and at that point, it would be really great to, you know, for you guys to start playing with it, uh, both as a resource developer and also as a configuration developer. Uh, and keep in mind, early on, you may only have partial resources to play with. Oh. And with one, two last things, real quick, and then um, keep two things in mind that Steve said that really stand out to me that, that is making a difference in how we approach this. One, decoupled from PowerShell, you can run configurations without having PowerShell. 
that affects a lot of people in scenarios that they're thinking about. The other thing is, remember when we were talking about this, what's the most important thing in this scenario is resources. It's really hard to write resources if you have to write them in PowerShell, if you don't already know PowerShell. So now resources can be written. So if a domain te technologist makes a, a, an app written in Rust, they're not going to learn PowerShell to write a DSC resource. Now they can just write the resource in Rust. So this isn't the idea being we can build more resources so we can configure and manage more stuff quicker. Yeah? So thank you very much. And if you want to uh, follow up with questions and that, you can catch Steve or myself outside out there because we have to leave to get out of the room. So thank you.